In this video, we're going to discuss atomic mass. Now, you're already familiar with atomic mass from investigating the periodic table. So we've looked at atomic mass as this entry on the periodic table. If we take a look at this example for carbon, right? We said that this is the atomic mass, that this C represented the chemical symbol, and that the six up top was the atomic number. Now, on their face, on the surface, the atomic number and chemical symbol are pretty easy to understand. The chemical symbol is just the identifier we give for that particular element. Atomic number is your number of protons, exactly. Now, the atomic mass actually has a little bit more nuance to it. When I first introduced it, we basically said that this was the weight of an atom of a particular element, but like I said, it's a little bit more complicated than that. In the last video, we talked about the idea of counting by weighing. We used the example of uh, pouring out a certain ma mass of almonds to get to 800 almonds. And we used the average of 0.6 grams per almond uh, as the weight of each almond. Now, does that mean that every single almond that you pick out of the bag is gonna be 0.6 grams? No, of course not. That's the average weight of the almonds. And the atomic mass serves a similar function here. This is the average weight of a carbon atom um, based on their natural occurrence in nature, right? So, uh, so let's talk about this a little bit and, and kind of stick with this carbon example. So there are three naturally occurring isotopes of carbon. So three naturally occurring isotopes of carbon, right? So we have three of these guys and the three that occur in nature are carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. Right, so these are the uh, atomic symbols for each of the individual isotopes. So we have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14, right? Now, of course, since the atomic number of carbon is six, all of these isotopes have six protons, right? No doubt, but the number of neutrons are different. This guy has six neutrons, carbon 12, um, carbon 13 has seven neutrons, and carbon 14 has eight neutrons, right? So that's why their weights are going to be different. Now, um, what we can do here is get the natural uh, abundance for each one of these isotopes. And this just comes from known data uh, for the natural abundance of each of these isotopes. Carbon-12 is the most abundant isotope of carbon. So this means this is the one that you will see most often in nature. This one occurs at about 98.89%. So that's the abundance of carbon-12. Carbon-13 accounts for about 1.11% of all carbon. And the amount of carbon-14 is actually negligible. So it's a little bit less than this 0.01% uh, that we have accounted for in carbon-13. So, um, so this is, these are the isotopic abundances. isotopic abundance and so this just basically tells you the likelihood if you were to be able to you know like like you could with a single almond if you could pick out a single individual carbon atom obviously it's overwhelmingly likely that that's going to be carbon 12 but not a hundred percent some of those are going to be carbon 13 and a negligible amount um, would be carbon 14 Right. So um, so this this is the abundance of carbon in nature and what the atomic mass number does. What the atomic mass does is tries to get a, you know, more or less an average based on the isotopic abundance. So um, so what I want to do here is uh, kind of establish units for the atomic mass. And we're going to have to do that based on some experimental data from an experimental technique called mass spectrometry. And we'll talk more about mass spectrometry in the next video. Uh, so I'll save the details for that video. But one of the uh, 
premier data that you get from mass spectrometry is a mass ratio between different isotopes. So for example, you could get the mass ratio between carbon 13, right? So the mass of carbon 13, a ratio of that to the mass of carbon 12. And from mass spectrometry data, we get that ratio to be about 1.0836, right? So this is the ratio, the mass ratio, right? So this doesn't have anything to do with abundance. This has to do with the mass ratio, right? If it was if it had to do with abundance, then this number would be much, much lower, right? Uh, so, so the mass ratio between these two is 1.0836. Three, six. So what that tells us is that carbon-13 is a little bit heavier than carbon-12, right? Um, so what we can do here is do a little algebra with this expression to isolate the mass of carbon-13. So that'll be 1.0836, this ratio, times the mass of carbon-12. So now at this point, we have to either determine the mass of carbon-12 or establish the mass of carbon-12. And what we're going to do is establish this uh, mass of carbon-12. So the modern system for atomic masses, called the atomic mass unit, is based off a system where the mass of carbon-12 is exactly 12 mass units. So the mass of carbon-12 is exactly 12 atomic mass units, right? So we can actually plug that in here. So we got 1.0836 times 12 AMU. So that's the abbreviation for atomic mass units. And that's the modern unit that we use for atomic masses. Now we'll talk more detail about this in the coming uh, videos and, and kind of establish uh, a, a more explicit unit for atomic mass units. But for now, just know that this is, you can write AMU, this is our system for atomic masses. So when you do the multiplication, you get the mass of carbon 13 is about 13.0032 AMU. So close to 13, but not exactly 13. In fact, carbon 12 is going to be, you know, really the only isotope that's going to be a, a whole number like this. Every other mass of most other isotopes are going to be some sort of decimal that's close to this number that we usually put in a superscript, right? So that gives us the mass of carbon 13. So now the question is, how do we get the atomic mass, right? So how do we calculate atomic mass. We have everything we need for it now. So I should say we have everything we need knowing that the mass of carbon 14 is negligible and won't really have to factor into our calculation, right? We know we're going to need this mass of carbon 13, right? We know the mass of carbon 12 um, is going to be exactly 12 atomic mass units. So to calculate the atomic mass of carbon, Right, so I'll just uh, write this as carbon, right? So for the atomic mass of carbon, what we're gonna have to do is multiply the atomic mass of each of the contributions times their isotopic abundance, right? So the abundance for carbon 12 is 98.89. What we wanna do is turn that, in, turn that percentage into a decimal, right? All you, all you have to do there is just, you know, divide by 100 or move the decimal place to uh, two places to the left. So that gives us 0 0.9889, right? We wanna multiply that by 12 AMU. Right. And then on top of that, we want to add the abundance for carbon 13, uh, which will be 0 0.0111 times the mass of carbon 13, which is this 13.0032 AMU. So when you do the math, you get the mass of carbon is look at that 12.01 AMU. Right, which is exactly what we get on the periodic table, right? So this number for the periodic table, this is not the 
uh, atomic mass that you would find for every single carbon atom in nature. This is accounting for the isotopic abundance, giving you more or less an average, right? An average mass of your collection of different isotopes for that element, right? So you'll notice that very few atoms on the periodic table have whole number atomic masses, unless they're man-made elements. So of course, man-made elements have a uh, whole number of atomic masses, but everything else, anything that occurs in nature that has varying isotopes with, you know, different isotopic abundances, those are going to have some sort of decimal atomic mass. And that's going to be calculated based on the, the relative abundance of each isotope. So if you have isotopic abundance data and you have the mass of each isotope in atomic mass units, then you have everything you need to calculate the atomic mass. So in the next video, we're going to go more in detail about this technique, mass spectrometry, a very useful technique in chemistry um, where all of this mass data for different, um, for different isotopes comes from.